say, man? You got a joint? Uh, no, not on me, man. <laughs> It'd be a lot cooler if you did. <laughs> I am obsessed with drugs. Okay, now that I have your attention, what I mean by that is I'm obsessed with understanding what a drug actually is in terms of its neurochemical influence on the brain and why in God's name that we think the war on drugs has any credibility whatsoever. Oh no, he didn't. <laughs> Human beings have been obsessed with getting out of their heads from time immemorial. And I was down at the park about a week ago, two weeks ago, I think, and uh, you know, with some family friends and the kid uh, was like, dad, 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 swimming around, swimming around, swimming around. I was thinking like, what is he actually doing there? And he's trying to get out of his head. He's getting that dizzy. He's trying to get that trip, that high. All right, all right, all right. And for whatever reason, we, we have this tendency to chase different psychological states. Now you might be thinking, well, Tom, you know, I don't do drugs. Well, it depends on what you mean by drug. We get dopamine hits all the time when we, when we get on our phones. Many of us drink multiple coffees a day. I'm trying to cut down there. <laughs> Drugs aren't just, you know, heroin and crystal meth and, and, and weed and all this sort of thing. They are exogenous products, ex exogenous substances that change the neurochemistry in the brain. And then when you think about the reasons why people get addicted to hard drugs and what's actually going on there, they're really trying hard to get a positive emotion because they feel so bad in their lives depending on their scenarios or, or what happened to them. It helps us kind of shed light as to the ridiculousness of the war on drugs. I'm reading a book at the moment called In the Realm of Hungry Ghosts, uh, which is a book by Gabor Mate. He was a GP, he's been a physician for years uh, from Canada. He works in the downtown east side, which I'm, I've not been to Canada, I'm not too familiar with, but it's a home of a lot of, uh, a lot of people who have addiction problems. One of the things he talks about when it comes to the war on drugs, it's like, how can you have a war on inanimate objects? And when I read that, I was like, I wonder what it would be like going to war with flower pots. <laughs> no, that's true. It'd be ridiculous, you know? But we have this thing that drugs are inherently bad and that everyone who uses drugs will be addicted straight away and that will be the end, you know? And I was reading Chasing the Screen by Johan Hari. Bang, right there. Guaranteed he's not sponsoring the channel, uh, but he was saying this kind of whole drugs are bad and if we, we, we take a hit we're addicted straight away. It came about in the 1970s, you know, if a rat is in a cage and the rat is just take, you know, it's given two options, water laced with, with morphine or, or heroin, you know, just the morphine is the chemically pure form of heroin. Uh, and, and water, the rat is always going to go for the, the, the morphine water. But then a bloke named Bruce Alexander came along and he said, well, imagine what it would be like if you were stuck in a cage all day. So we built this thing called Rat Park and Rat Park is just like pleasure town for rats. So Luna Park, if you're in Melbourne uh, for, for us, but it's just, you know, heaps of friends, heaps of ways to bond and have sex and good food and, you know, little wills to run around and all these sorts of things. And they never went for the, the, the water. I'm pretty sure the water was laced with morphine, but it could, it could have been cocaine water. So if you're watching this, let me know. So that just tells you what this, you know, this idea about how the, the brain is chasing that run towards pleasure, run away from pain. And we see that with people that are really addicted and have the worst issues, the worst struggles with, with addiction and drug dependency. And they are some of the most traumatized people that exist today. And what do we do? Because we are perpetuating this war on drugs, we condemn them and we incarcerate them. So we put them in cages that look like the rats that want to go and get more addicted to get out of their heads. And it just becomes worse and worse and worse. I think what's so important to understand about the war on drugs is that there are people that sell drugs and commit crimes. You know, you, you can you can imagine what goes on in Juarez at the border between the US and Mexico. Terrible, terrible gang-related violence and crimes. And when we're talking about decriminalization or, or harm reduction, safe for sane drug laws, we're not saying necessarily that, you know, all drugs, you know, should be legal and let's just gun ho and, you know, because it would just be it, you can understand why people would think it would be pandemonium, but decriminalization or safer, saner drug laws essentially refers to the idea that we don't want to condemn people that have dependency issues anymore. So we want to, you know, take stock of what Portugal did and have been doing since the early 2000s and have a look at how when people are in possession for, you know, 
not a, not copious amounts of drugs, but they clearly have issues. We're not putting them in prison or, or you know banning them or doing things that make make it really hard for them to exist in the world and have some kind of positive social life. We're giving them options to help them with their 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 psychological pain. You've come to comfort me. Yes, Bart. They're there. They're there. And when we start to look at drugs, not as just inherently bad, we start to ask people why they're using the drugs in the first place, we're going to get a much more rounded idea as to what's actually going on and why the war on drugs is so, so shit. It just doesn't, it, we've given it, look, we can give, we've given it a fair crack, you know? It's been a hundred years, over a hundred years now, I think. Um, and, uh, no, nothing's really changed. You could say that the whole fear mechanism and the, the Nancy Reagan campaign of just say no, um, you know, I think I was a, I'm in Australia, but I was a bit of a byproduct of that. And I remember having this idea that drugs were dangerous and not to be toyed with. And you could argue that having a, a bit of fear there um, might have saved me from, from potentially going down dark ways. But there's also a lack of authenticity, I think, when it comes to that approach. It's a very, very ideological argument to say that all drugs are bad, especially when we view drugs as any kind of substance that elicits a, you know, an, a change in the brain. Because there are so many drugs now that are legal. Alcohol, weed in, in California, obviously, uh, coffee, um, cigarettes, you know, and we can broaden that out to anything that fits that definition of that substance that changes the brain. When we start to give addicts and people that have dependency issues a little bit more time, go, you know, hey, what happened in your life? Why are you doing this? Why is this, why do you think this is such a good idea? And why is it so hard for you to get off? It's not just drugs are bad, it's they're using it to overcome some kind of pain. I think when we start to look at the war on drugs from that different angle, we start to see that, okay, maybe something needs to change. What do you think? Do you think that we, do you think the war on drugs has been good? Do you have some kind of stat that I've not read that uh, basically says, look, Tom, we should probably keep going against the drugs and trying to wipe them off the face of the earth. I'm open to hearing your opinion and feedback. I'll speak to you soon.